So today's video is going to be about the basics of Julia. I essentially try to get the most in 10 minutes. It's a little bit longer than 10 minutes, but you get the idea. Let me know what you think in the comments. Also, let me know what you want to know more about. I will already ask you to like and subscribe and I'll see you at the end. Okay, so let's start with the basics. If you came from Python, the one thing that you might encounter soon is that this doesn't work because power in Julia is the circumflex operator, okay? So three elevated to four. Most of the other things in Python are the same. So exponential of the sine of pi times four is gonna work. Of course, pi times four is not exactly a good example, but uh, other things like that. Uh, you notice that I have pi here. I don't have to import anything. I don't have to import math. All of these things are available by default. No reason for me to delete this. So the basic types of Julia are the numbers and strings. So you have three and you also have 3.0. These are different types. You also have strings like Abel Cicada, which is the name of this channel, which you should subscribe. You also have symbols. So this is a different thing. So well, Abel is a symbol. I'm a symbol. This symbol is easier to manipulate. You can't try to change it. It's a little bit like an enumerate uh, from C, C++. You also have booleans like false and true. One thing that you also notice is that we have tuples. So false comma true becomes a tuple, false and true. And we have uh, lists, but actually these are not lists. lists. List is a specific type. These are arrays like C arrays or NumPy arrays. Specifically, these arrays are like vectors. So if I try to create a three, four, five array and I try to multiply by two, it's gonna multiply the values of the array by two. Unlike Python, you would duplicate the array. This is like linear algebra. So one of the main things of Julia, it's linear algebra oriented, okay? Similarly, you can have matrices. So one, two, three, actually don't use commas. Two, three, if you want to create a line break, you use a semicolon, four, five, six, and this is a matrix, okay? So one thing to do here, you can use the stick, the quote, and you're gonna have the transpose of this matrix and you can multiply the matrix by the vector if it had the same dimension. It doesn't have the same dimension, so you have to use the correct dimension. So A times V. So as I said, these things have types. So you see here, the type of the matrix is uh, well, the type is a matrix, but the type of the element of the matrix is int 64. If I change one of these things, it's going to be a matrix of float 64. The type of the elements of the matrix is going to be something that supports the whole matrix. Uh, so here, the same thing. If I use five, it changes. You should also notice that when I multiply this float matrix with this integer array, it becomes a float array. Since we are talking about arrays, we can iterate over an array using a for x in. So in is the same as in Python, but you can also use equal. It works the same way. Equal is the traditional MATLAB syntax. So that's why you have both of them. So you can say for x in one, two, three. Inside the for, we can just print x like a print ln and Okay, so print is gonna print into the terminal, so that's why this appeared here. Uh, print ln prints with a line break, so you can remove ln and print sequentially without any line breaks. Of course, we want a line break here, it's what makes more sense. You also notice that here I have finished my for with an end. I did not have to give it a, a column to announce that I'm inside a, a for. The end of the for is uh, implicit. So I could write it in a single line. I don't have to give it any special indentation like Python has, but I also don't have to give it uh, braces like C would have. And this works for more than one element in this form. So I could write print, print, space, print x squared. The same is true for ifs. So if x is greater than zero, print x is greater than zero. Of course, we don't have an x here. So if you save, there is no x defined. 
So you actually have to define a x somewhere. X equals one. So x is greater than zero. The else is simply an else. X is not. Let's not suffer with that. So if I change this to minus one, x is not. So if x is zero, we could add a special case, which is else if. Else if x is zero, print x is zero. Okay, so you can change to zero here. You can see x is zero. So while is the same deal to showcase that, let's create a function. And one of the ways to create a function is by writing the name function, the name of the function and the arguments. So here is my square root function. And there is an interesting way to compute square roots. Uh, and the thing is you will, don't worry, I'm gonna complete that. You will update your square root by writing down x equals two, uh, sorry, a over x plus x divided by two. And you're gonna stop when your value x is close enough to a. So you want to do the absolute value of this difference. It should be smaller than 10 to the minus six, for instance. And you return x. Okay, so my square root of two should be 144. My square root of three should be 17 something. Okay, we can try with a number which we know easily the square root with like nine. So here, while a condition, do some operation. The return is actually optional. You can write just x and it will return. If you don't give it a something in the end, like this while doesn't return anything, the return is nothing. So this is a special type, type nothing is of type nothing. Another way to create a function is by giving it a direct definition. So like f of x equals x squared minus 5x plus 6. In some cases, when you have a literal and a variable, you don't have to write uh, the multiplication sign. So f of 1 is this much. Uh, if you want to compute a function on many values, for instance, I want to compute the function on the value uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you could use f dot, and dot is essentially saying broadcast the f to this array, okay? So if I call this v up here, it works like that. If you forget the v, is going to try to do v squared, and v squared doesn't work, okay? It's the same error. The circumflex function for a vector doesn't exist, okay? You could write v dot circumflex, and this is broadcasting the circumflex function to v. These are special functions to the operators, like in operator, so these work. It, the same for plus. If you write v plus 2, it doesn't work. If you write dot plus, it broadcasts to everything, okay? So here we can write f dot. The same way that we did this function, we can write a simpler matrix like matrix B, two, three, four, five, and we could write f dot B. So f dot B is gonna be that function on this array. It's a, an array again, but now it's a two dimensional array. If you write f only on B, it doesn't work because here I'm not broadcasting the sum. So x squared works, 5x works, plus 6 doesn't work. If I change this to a plus and save, you can see that it works now. So you can do operations with matrices easily as well. Another interesting type that you might want to use frequently is the dictionary type. So here you have to write dict explicitly. So the dictionary type receives a key, arrow, and value. For instance, one arrow a or 10 arrow B. You're going to see that this dictionary also has a type. This dictionary has int64 for keys and string for types. And if you do something like I'm going to write five and I'm going to use a number, you're going to have a different type. So this is another thing in Julia, if the type of the array is going to be generic enough. So if you actually have one true an A in a single array, the type of this array is going to be any. So mixing types 
inside the race in Julia is not good because you want to specialize things, you want to be predictable. So this is any, and is not predictable. This is one of the things that make your code slow in Julia. So be aware of types. Since we're talking about dictionaries and arrays, we can talk about comprehension. So in Python, you already have this. Let's say you want to create one squared for one in one to five. So the first thing you want to do is what is one to five? You could write it like this and it's going to work. So one, four, nine, 16, 25 are one, two, three, four, five squared. But you can also use one column five and now you have the squares. Okay, so this is array comprehension or vector comprehension. And you also have dictionary comprehension. So you can say one goes to one square for I is equal to one to, to 10. Why not? Okay, so it also works like that. Don't expect order in dictionaries. That's also important. And finally, indexing. So is squares one, the first element of this array. If you want to find the last element of an array, you can write end. There is no such thing as, as squares minus one. Doesn't work. Right, but you have slices, so three colon five, also three to five, indexes three to five inclusive. So as Julia starts at index one, it also includes the last index. So it also works if you want to give specific values like one, three, four, and you can also pass uh, ranges that skip. So like one, two, five, skipping two by two. So one, jump two to five. Also a normal thing to do is to access for a given number to the end. You have to be explicit and say end. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. Please like and subscribe to show support for the channel and I'll see you next time. Bye.